Well, hi, thank you for doing this event this evening. Uh, I'm happy to see everybody here and involved. A lot of times the municipal races don't bring the same amount of attention that congressional or state level races do, so I'm glad to see you all here. I am Paula Hughes, Republican nominee. Uh, some of my background, I was elected to the county council twice, served two full terms for eight years. Uh, twice they uh, elected me as their president. Uh, I also was president of the downtown improvement district for six and a half years. Uh, and I can tell you that I'm running for mayor because I love this city. Uh, it is a great town. It's where I choose to raise my family. It's where we run our business. And there are so many things that are going right in Fort Wayne. I just want to see us go to that next level. Uh, there are uh, a lot of things that I could stand up here and talk about. And hopefully some of you have tuned into the, the campaign message that we've been talking about. And that really is the fact that the city of Fort Wayne is struggling financially. And I am running very strongly on a platform of cutting wasteful spending, reducing the city's debt, and getting Fort Wayne working again. It is past time for us to be on this Sunday afternoon stroll and time to get to work. The rest of the world knows that it's Monday morning and time to get to work. It's time that Fort Wayne did as well. So for young leaders, what are we going to do for young leaders? Uh, I was uh, actually, when I was running the DID, Wendy Stein was one of the organizers of YLNI. My office was in the basement of the Chamber of Commerce building, and uh, I was just oh, just a little bit past the age cutoff uh, for being involved, uh, but I still get all the emails. And I think one of the problems we've had in Fort Wayne is that we have not done a good job as a community at succession planning. And what I mean by that is turning over generational leadership. We tend to have a lot of uh, folks that have been in power for a long time that are considered leaders and continue to be considered leaders, but there's been a little bit of a barrier for people coming up and stepping into those leadership positions. Uh, and there's a lot we can do to take, take care of that, to advance the opinions of young leaders. And it's not just that we want to bring you know, new generations in, but because of, we are in an informational and technological revolution right now, we need people who think differently than I do. I mean, I didn't learn how to use a computer until after I graduated from college. And I'm presuming that most of the folks in this room that are members of this organization probably were actively using computers and technology when you were in middle school, high school. There are things that you will bring to the table that older people don't understand or don't use quite as well. So for me, attracting young people, and I feel like it's a little bit of a cliche, but beyond job creation, it's about creating an environment, a sense of place that draws people. And that's for young or old. There's not something that distinguishes what's attractive in a community to a young or an old person. It's about a sense of place and an attitude. How do we maintain that vibrant attitude as a community? Downtown, riverfront development, I've talked a lot about. And those are all things that will happen under my administration. The city owns 90% of the riverfronts. We should be developing them. We should be doing something with them. Clear the ground, let the private sector come in, and make something of this city. Thank you very much.